the big disgrace you waving your banner all over the place. We will, we will rock you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're too kind. Thank you. <laughs> It is so great to be among all you beautiful right-wingers. <laughs> um, I've been uh, watching the MSNBC coverage of CPAC, uh, and is, is there any other station where every host you know was at the alternative prom? <laughs> but... But... <laughs> But apparently they think you're not hip and good looking enough. That's from the alternative prom crowd. Speaking of which, I will be debating Bill Maher in New York, Boston, and Chicago, March 9, 10, and 11, if any of you can come. Well, it's, it's good to see the media transitioning to their aggressive watchdog role since Obama's election. <laughs> Overnight they went from being the people's watchdog to government guard dog. That's with the exception of Chris Matthews and Keith Oberman, who are the government's lap dog. <laughs> first, first Time Magazine compared Obama to Jesus, so I lost a bet. Liberals do know who Jesus is. <laughs> Boy, he's egg on my face. Uh, but as the leader of 12 apostles, even Jesus had more executive experience than Obama. <laughs> that's, that's right, they really did compare Obama to Jesus Christ, marking the first time the mainstream media was not worried about offending Muslims. <laughs> so, so apparently they like carpenters, it's plumbers they hate. The Jesus analogy was in a Time Magazine piece by Nancy Gibbs, uh, and keep in mind this was Time Magazine's hatchet piece on Obama. <laughs> the article began, some princes are born in palaces, some are born in mangers, but a few are born in the imagination out of scraps of history and hope. <laughs> Translation, the Democrats finally won an election. Congratulations, Democrats. Uh, though, l like the virgin birth, the Democrats winning any election is something of a miracle. <laughs> Having pulled off their rather mediocre 53% to 46% victory, uh, liberals can't stop boasting about their new baby boy. On, on Thursday, Obama took his first step, and on Friday, he appointed Rahm Emanuel, had White House Chief of Staff. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> And this morning during bath time, I could have sworn he used his first word, entitlement. <laughs> and, and, and yes, I got it on video. Uh, see, that right there proves this whole Jesus thing is wrong. Uh, would, would the baby Jesus have had a play date with Damien? <laughs> Uh, the gushing parents theme for the last few months has been that, that Obama is the incarnate spirit of Abraham Lincoln. So I guess it's the end of Obama's honeymoon with the press. He's not Jesus anymore, he's just Lincoln. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but I can't see Lincoln text messaging with Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Nothing against the girl, I just don't see that. Um, and I forget, how many times did Lincoln vote present? <laughs> Obama voted present more than 100 times. In fact, the only time he wasn't present was when Jeremiah Wright was giving one of those hate-filled sermons. <laughs> if if the press really thinks Obama is Lincoln, they ought to treat him 
like they treated Bush, because that's how they treated Lincoln. <laughs> uh, his critics compared Lincoln to an ape. They called him an illiterate baboon. If only Al Sharpton had been around, Lincoln would have known he was a victim of racism. <laughs> Our, our fiercely independent media has already produced dozens of stories on the Obama equals Lincoln theme. Uh, why, back in Illinois, they're still talking about the fist bump Abe gave Mary Todd the night he wrapped up the nomination. It was, it was a big night for Mary Todd. She was finally proud of her country. <laughs> A Newsweek cover story on the Obama equals Lincoln theme explains two thin men from rude beginnings, relatively new to Washington but wise to the world, bring the nation together to face a crisis. Uh, and it's true, wasn't Lincoln one of the first to warn us about the crisis of global warming? <laughs> Wait until these august members of the press find out that Obama sleeps through the night now without wetting himself. The, the one thing every, mem every liberal on TV seems to know about Lincoln is that he put rivals on his cabinet. I'm, I'm not sure reaching out to the Clintons and buying their entire cabinet at fire sale prices count. <laughs> I'm not sure that constitutes reaching out to rivals, but I guess it has a better ring to it than reaching out to has been also rands. <laughs> to be fair, Obama is the person now most likely to put um, our